Hi everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be recreating this really pretty makeup look that I saw on Bella Hadid. I was actually scrolling through TikTok looking at Bella Hadid hairstyle inspiration and I saw this look and I actually really was intrigued and drawn to her makeup so I thought I would recreate it for you guys today. I thought it would be fun to recreate this look using a bunch of new products that I've received or purchased recently. There's just been a ton of really new fun releases that I've been wanting to test out so I thought it would be a great opportunity to do that today. Before we get into the tutorial I would love it if you guys could leave a thumbs up or a comment down below it would really mean a lot to me. And yeah, without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial. All right, so jumping right into the tutorial, I am so excited to play around with these new makeup products I have in my collection and attempt to recreate this Bella Hadid makeup look that I saw scrolling on TikTok the other day. I think she is so pretty. I could just stare at her face. She is beautiful and I love her makeup in this photo. I don't normally wear dark makeup. If you guys have been watching a few of my videos, you can already kind of gather that I'm more of a natural girl. Like a less is more kind of vibe is my vibe. I don't really like foundation, smoky eyes, all that stuff. It's just not really my go-to, you know, but I thought this makeup looked really pretty. And so I'm going to attempt it today. This could look great. This could look not so great. Nonetheless, I'm excited to try it and to try all these new makeup products. Eee! Okay, so I'm going to jump right into skincare. I don't have a ton of new skincare per se. Um, I have been testing out a lot of skincare and I'm actually thinking about doing a nighttime skincare routine because I've really dialed in my nighttime skincare regimen. Is that how you say that word? Regime? I don't know. My skincare routine at night is dialed in and I've been noticing major differences in my skin. Anyways, I would like to share it with you guys, but I don't know if you guys are into that kind of stuff. So if you are, if you wanna see my nighttime makeup routine, leave a comment down below letting me know or a thumbs up this video to let me know that's something that you wanna see. Okay, finally, we're gonna start applying Prada. I'm gonna start off by prepping the skin with this Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Super Fusion Facial Oil. I love Charlotte Tilbury's packaging. It's always so beautiful, so extra, so luxurious, elegant. I have not tried this oil yet. I just received it in PR a little while ago, so I'm really excited to test on camera for you guys. I'm just gonna take a couple drops on my fingertip. I'm gonna warm it up in my hands. I'm just going to press it onto my skin. It's got a very light scent. I don't mind it at all. I'm just being very careful not to pull my face when I apply my skincare. Um, I have quite delicate skin. Again, just being really gentle, pushing it into the skin. And if I am going to kind of massage it in, I'm just going to gently massage in an upwards motion. So I think three drops was the perfect amount. My skin feels hydrated, it applied really nicely, and I'm just gonna kind of let that soak into my skin for a couple minutes before I start applying makeup. So while the skincare I just applied is sinking into my skin, I'm just going to prep my eyelids with a little bit of Urban Decay Primer Potion just so the eyeshadows we apply have something to stick to a little better and also so that the colors apply a bit more vibrant and more pigmented. So I was hoping to do this eye look all with the new Ariana Grande REM Beauty eyeshadow palettes. However, there really isn't a transition shade in any of the palettes. So I'm going to use a not new, old favorite transition shade. This is the Dior Backstage Eye Palette. And I'm going to take the sculpting powder in the shade Ombre. It doesn't really look like this eyeshadow is too blended in the photos, however, just as a guide and for a little bit more of a seamless blended look, I like to do this as, yeah, like a guideline so that I don't go overboard later so that my shadows that I apply on top are a little bit more forgiving and easy to blend, especially because we're gonna be using some dark browns. I wanna make sure that I can just blend it easy and it just doesn't look too, too harsh. For the winged cat eye shape, I just like to take it at my outer corner and just really lightly flick it up like this. That way you get a really nice soft blend. It doesn't look too harsh. And I'm just dragging it kind of towards my temples. That shadow is so gorgeous. I love the way these shadows blend. All of the backstage 
palettes, the powders at least, the formula is absolutely incredible. If you've watched any of my other videos in the past, you will likely have seen that I rave all the time about the Dior Backstage Contour Palette. It's my favorite. Oh, it's just so good. And I think they discontinued it, which makes me really sad. But what I wanted to say about these powders is that they're almost like, like a gel formula. It's like a, like a cream to powder situation, but it's not. It's a powder. They're just that buttery that they almost feel like a cream when you're applying them and blending them. Honestly, they are my favorite formula that I've ever worked with hands down and especially for the face. Oh, they just blend so beautifully. Dior, please bring back the backstage contour palette. Don't take it away from me. So moving into the fun part slash kind of nerve wracking part, I'm gonna go in with a dark brown. I'm going to be dipping into this matte medium brown shade from the REM Smitten Kitten eyeshadow palette. So this is the first time that I'm actually using the Smitten Kitten REM Beauty palette. I didn't actually review this one in my review. If you wanna go check out my REM Beauty chapter two review, I will leave a link in the bio or maybe I'll put a little link on the screen here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mapping out that kind of darker outer corner cat eye shape that she has going on. I'm basically gonna go right on top of the light brown shadow I already applied, and I'm just gonna kind of draw out a shape. I'm not gonna worry too much about exact placement for now um, because I'm gonna blend it out softly later. But yeah, I basically am just gonna create a outer V shape on my eye. I'm actually quite liking the shade of this brown. This isn't the most pigmented eyeshadow that I've ever used, but I don't mind it for this look because it's actually kind of being a little forgiving with me, which I like. Bella in the photos also has this shadow brought much farther in, but I don't think I'm gonna bring it in quite that far. I think I'm only gonna bring it into about here. Not quite all the way. So now that I have that shape, I'm just gonna start blending that out with a clean blending brush. Ooh, this is actually blending out better than I anticipated. Okay, that is a very nice surprise. All right, so to deepen this up a little bit more, I'm going to dip into the Groovy Baby eyeshadow palette from REM Beauty, and I'm gonna use the darkest kind of warm berry brown shadow in the palette, and I'm just going to kind of just go on top of what I've already applied in a bit of a smaller area to just really intensify the outer corner. I think I am happy with that. I'm just gonna blend that with a clean blending brush again. I will say these REM shadows are not the easiest to blend. They are a little bit chalky. I would not describe them as creamy shadows. They're definitely more powdery. But they definitely don't look bad. This is what the eyes are looking like at this moment. So I will say I've spent a very generous amount of time blending this eye look so far. The shadows aren't the most blendable. However, I will say I am really liking the way these colors are looking, especially the kind of purplish berry brown from the Groovy Baby palette. I think this color is so pretty, especially on green eyes. If you have green eyes, the slight purple kind of berry tone in this brown will really make your eyes pop which is what I am loving. So now I'm going to add a little bit of brightness onto my lid, just to kind of bring a bit of dimension into it. I'm going to apply the lightest shade in the Smitten Kitten eyeshadow palette. And I'm just gonna pop that on the centers of my lid and I'm going to kind of cut my crease a little bit just to add some more contrast with the dark colors. All right, so that's the rosy tone on the lids. I think I'm gonna move on to a little bit of liner now. So this is actually an older favorite of mine. I'm actually just going to take Max Coffee Coal Liner and just run it along my upper lash line. I'm not gonna take it all the way in. I'm probably only gonna take it about two thirds, three quarters of the way in and just smudge that out. I'm going to slightly wing out that liner, just following the shape that we made before. For this step, it really doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be blending it out later, so don't worry about being too precise. So I'm just gonna take a small detailed brush and just start to blend that out, dragging it upwards. I'm obviously not applying it quite as thick as Bella did in the photos, but for my eyes, I just prefer a little bit less 
of a liner on top. So I am going to intensify that a little bit just by popping on some of that berry brown shade right on top of that liner, just to deepen it up a little bit. I'm just going to pack that color on with an angled brush and just stamp it all along the lash line. All right, so I think that's looking pretty good for the upper lid. I'm just going to take a makeup wipe and clean up this edge here. All right, so I never do this when I do my makeup. I personally usually don't think it looks very good on me, but we are going to try today. I'm going to line my waterline. I'm going to be using the Patrick Ta Rich Brown Precision Gel Liner, and I'm just going to line my tight line and my lower lash line. All right, so there is that. I love these Patrick Ta liners. They do not budge and they actually apply really easily. I really love them for the tight line and the waterline and this color in particular is gorgeous. I don't like to use black. I definitely prefer brown. Um, so if you're looking for a nice brown liner to use in your tight line or waterline, I would definitely recommend this one. Okay, so I'm going to switch it up a little bit for the lower lash line. I see that Bella doesn't have a ton going on in her lower lash line. So I'm just going to kind of blend that liner that we just applied out, but I'm going to use a bit of a more plummy purple shade. I'm going to use the deepest shade in this Buxom Darling Dolly palette. This is brand new from Buxom. And I think this color is so beautiful and I feel like it'll kind of intensify that effect on my green eyes and it'll make my green eyes pop. So I'm going to go in with a detailed brush and just slightly run that along my lower lash line. I'm gonna keep it really thin. This eyeshadow is super pigmented, super creamy and applied really nice without any concealer or primer under my eyes. So I'm very impressed with that. I'm gonna hold off on inner corner highlight. I will be applying it later, but I think for now I'm just gonna move into mascara and the rest of the face. All right, so for mascara, I'm not using a new product. I'm using an old favorite. This is the Swede Pro Lash Lift Mascara, and this mascara is amazing. It's incredible. Love it for top and bottom lashes. Makes your lashes look so good. I wanted to make sure I used a really solid mascara because it doesn't look like Bella's wearing lashes in this look, so I just want to make sure my lashes just look on point so that I don't need any lashes. And I really do feel like this mascara lengthens and gives a ton of volume, so... That's why I chose this one for this look. So I'm gonna take the remainder of that first coat and just apply a very light layer to my bottom lashes. So that is mascara done. As you can see, it makes a huge difference in the way my eyes look. This is obviously with mascara, this is without. I did apply a second layer of mascara. So this is two layers on top, just one thin layer on the bottom, and I think it looks really good. All right, so I applied mascara on both eyes and now we're gonna move on to the skin. I am going to be using the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation, and I was sent these in PR, so I'm really excited to try. So I have these two shades. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna use. I will say right now I'm extremely pale. Neither of these shades are my shade, but I'm gonna wear it anyways because I'm wearing a turtleneck and drag it down my neck. It'll be fine. I could use a little color anyways. So I have shade 1Y04 and 1N06. I think I tried 1Y04, but I'm going to try the N06. Um, and see how the neutral tones look on me. I'm also gonna try something that's not new, but is new for me. These brushes are from Artis, and I'm sure you guys have all seen these before. These have gone like super viral. They're some of the coolest makeup brushes ever, but I'm going to apply my foundation with this brush. So I'm excited. I love how this foundation comes with a pump. For some reason, I was not expecting it to come with a pump, but very pleasantly surprised by the pump. I'm going to, oh, pump a little out on the back of my hand. That's about two pumps. I'm probably not gonna use that much because I wanna keep the skin looking really light and fresh. So I'm gonna work in really thin layers and just build it up anywhere I need to. It's really not actually as dark as I thought. The other shade I used um, with the warm undertones was a little bit darker on me. So I'm actually quite liking the way this is applying so far. And I'm liking the way this brush is applying the foundation. It is looking very good so far. 
Okay, so my thoughts on the foundation right now are, I like it. It is not super high coverage, but it is very buildable. You guys know I'm not a huge fan of foundations. I'm generally like a no foundation or a tinted moisturizer kind of girl, but this is not giving me the like ick that most foundations do. My skin still has a dewy finish. It still looks like skin, but my skin is much more even. And I think this would be great for someone who doesn't like really cakey foundation. I also hear that it wears a long time and it sets down really good, so I'll have to let you guys know about that. So I didn't have any new concealers to test out, so I'm just going to be using my NARS Creamy Concealer, just a good favorite. So I'm mainly just gonna be applying this under my eyes. All right, and I'm just going to blend that out with a concealer brush. So that is with concealer. I'm just going to apply some powder under my eyes and around my mouth really quickly to set it in place. So moving on with the face, I'm going to be contouring and I'm going to be using my Nudegasm face palette. I'm going to be using the lightest contour shade in the palette just to chisel my cheeks a little bit. I really like this formula and I really like this shade. It's very cool. I would actually kind of compare the formula to the Dior Backstage Contour Palette. It's very creamy, easy to blend, nice and cool toned. It kind of just looks like a natural shadow when I apply it. When you're applying your contour, I would always recommend flicking up and going towards your hairline and cheekbones and always staying above your cheekbone because if you go below, you can kind of end up looking a little bit sunken instead of lifted. So just be aware of that when you're contouring and you should be good. Do a little bit on the sides of my nose as well. I'm never really too precise with this. I never like how it looks when I go too crazy. So I just lightly dust it. I'm also gonna lightly dust around my lips a little bit. So moving on to blush now, which is one of my favorite steps. I've been really loving this Afterglow Cheek Palette. I'm going to be mixing the two middle shades, mainly focusing on the one on top. I'm gonna dip into the shade Devotion first because it might be all that I need. It's just a very muted pink. I'm just going to tap that on the tops of my cheeks. I'm gonna keep it kind of high on my cheekbones. I actually really like this blush shade. It is the perfect color. It's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not actually gonna mix any of that other pink color in. These powders are so easy to blend. I always love NARS cheek products. I think they do them so well. All right, so moving on to lips, I'm going to line my lips using this Laura Mercier Chestnut Lip Liner. And it looks like Bella's wearing quite a heavy lip liner in this look. So I'm going to kind of try and replicate that, but maybe soften it ever so slightly. All right, so moving on to lipstick, I'm going to use this brand new lipstick from Merit. This is their signature lip lightweight lipstick in the shade Baby, and I just think this is the perfect shade for this look. This is the first time I'm trying this lip product, so I'm very excited to give it a shot. This is just a very light baby pink color, and I'm just going to tap it on top of my lips. So right off the bat, this does feel super lightweight. The color is really pretty. It's ever so slightly sheer, but you can still get a lot of color if you want. Like if you wanna build it up, it is very buildable. It doesn't feel drying on my lips, which is surprising because it's actually quite a matte finish. It doesn't have too much of a sheen. I also just love the packaging. It is very elegant and timeless. I love how Merit just develops staple products, makes sure that they are very high quality. The ingredients are great and functional and serve a purpose for the product and their formulations are really beautiful. I'm still quite new to the brand, but I'm very impressed. Yeah, I think more brands should consider that thinking. Honestly, I just want products in my collection that I'm constantly reaching to that I know the ingredients are actually effective and intentionally chosen versus just pumping out a ton of products that just take up a bunch of space, you know? Anyways, moving on to gloss. I just got this in the mail today and I 
I'm so excited. This is the Victoria Beckham Posh Gloss High Shine Lip. And I'm going to be using the shade Bikini today. Can we just talk about this packaging? Let me tell you, this is heavy. Like you can feel the quality, you can feel the weight in this product. I love the tortoiseshell kind of looking lid. It is beautiful. So I'm actually just going to be applying this gloss with a brush. I don't think Bella's wearing gloss in this look, but I obviously just am excited about this product and I really wanna try it and see how it looks on the lips. Oh, I love that milky light pink color. All right, so that is the gloss on the lips. I love it. I really love this shade. It's just a very light kind of 90s milky pinky color. I think it is so flattering, especially with my skin tone. If you are trying to achieve a nude lip look, I would highly recommend this gloss. It feels good. It's not sticky at all. Yeah, I'm really liking this gloss so far. All right, now for the finishing detail, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of shadow in my inner corners. I'm gonna dip back into this Buxom Darling Dolly palette, and I'm going to use the shade Dreamy and just pop it into my inner corners. All right, that is it for this Bella Hadid inspired makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. I'm actually really happy with the way this turned out. If you guys enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Also, if you guys have any recommendations for celebrity makeup looks to recreate, please leave them in the comment section down below. I actually really like doing these celebrity recreations. I've done it a few times on TikTok and I find it a lot of fun. So yeah, if you have any recommendations, please leave them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.